What about the kid? What kid? You know, the kid who rings the bell. What kid? What bell? What the hell are you talking about? The kid, after the mine caves in. The kid. He runs up the hill, he rings the bell to alert the town. Is that in the script? What page are we on? What if we gave the kid a disease? A disease? A disease. Braces on the leg, that sort of thing. But he runs up the hill. He could hobble. Hobbling's good. Uh, how green was my valley thing? That McDowell kid was great. Is he available? Uh, too old now. Plus, he's English. So he's English. So? Script set in Tennessee. Tennessee. Did I get that page? Forget the disease. Nobody wants disease. It's depressing. Horses right yeah, Who disease? Disease. It looks horrible. Just it's about it. I hate disease. <laughs> Box office poison. Hold on. Hold on. I think I got a what if. What if we give the main character, what's his name? Floyd. Terrible name. Change it. Say we give no name a dog. A dog? A dog. No name's faithful companion. Toils at his master's side in the coal mine. Day in, day out. Cave-in happens. Only the dog gets out. Right, right, because dogs are smaller, usually. And it's the dog that runs up the hill and rings the bell. Holy crap, that's beautiful. I'm choked up. I got goosebumps just then. People love dogs. Lassie pictures always grows high. So instead of a disease, we give the kid a dog? Forget the kid. There is no kid. The kid's a dog. Brilliant. Could be just what the movie needs. Let's ask the writer. What do you think, Pete? Oh. Wow. That's just amazing. <laughs> Of course, it's not like the postcards say it is. It's not glamour everywhere you look. I should know. I live here. This is my town. Sometimes it seems like everyone here is from someplace else. The reason? The movies. Everybody loves the movies. Which makes Hollywood everybody's town. And they come here by the busload. Five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. The next show will be starting in five minutes. Please step up. You purchase your ticket for our feature For most of these folks, Grauman's Chinese Theater is the most exciting place on the planet. For me, well, it's that and more. See, it's the theater playing my very first film credit. No, not that one. I wish. No, I'm the B-movie tonight. Sand Pirates of the Sahara. Not a bad picture, if I say so myself. Hell, you gotta start somewhere. God, I love seeing my name on a poster. Four years ago, in one of Filmland's darkest hours, ten men, the so-called Hollywood Ten, were called to testify before the House Committee on Un-American Activities, investigating the spread of the communist menace in Hollywood. Have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? 
The question of communism is in no way related to this inquiry. Which Refusing to answer the lawmakers' questions, the ten motion picture writers dared Congress to come after them. Excuse me. And after years of court wrangling, it's time to pay the piper. So it's off to jail. The charge, contempt of Congress. A new round of hearings begins this fall. The mandate, get the Reds out of Hollywood. Miss me. Every second. That's my girlfriend, Sandra Sinclair. And this is her town, too. She's from Cleveland. She came out here to be an actress. And that's just what she's doing. The first picture she ever appeared in was... the first picture I ever wrote. Your lovely Emily. My desert doll. You could just fly away from me. Hands off the lead. Roland! You. I thought you were dead. You thought wrong. <laughs> Let her go. I find your persistence tiresome. I get that a lot. Love, and we were working in the pictures. Life was good. I was walking along, minding my business, when out of an orange colored sky, flash, then Alakazam, wonderful. Louise. Gifts. Oh, they gave everyone the day off while they sort things out. Sort what out? What about my pages? Are they typed yet? Pages? Louise, I'm on a deadline. I need my pages. Oh, but those men took them. What men? Louise, those pages aren't even ready yet. Oh, I'm not even supposed to be talking to you. They're saying that you attended those meetings while you were in college. Is that wrong, Peter? Who's they? Yeah, Congress, FBI, Red Channels. It doesn't matter who they is. They know who they are. That's enough. Can I answer the question? Meetings. Meetings. How the hell should I know? It was a long time ago. I went to college on the GI Bill just after the war. Uh, the Bread Instead of Bullets Club. They were communists? Apparently so. What do I know? We were a bunch of kids. I couldn't figure out half of what they were saying. Why did you go, Peter? There was this girl. You consorted with communists to impress a skirt? Hey, I got dragged to poetry readings, too. That doesn't make me Carl Sandburg. <laughs> Come on, Leo, you know me. I'm non-political. Republicans, Democrats, communists, they all look alike to me. Peter, as legal counsel for this studio, I strongly advise you to watch what you say. Leo, put your agent hat on here. There must be some angle you can work. I'm fresh out of angles, kid. But the timing is a disaster. We're right in the middle of negotiating my new contract. Studio suspended negotiations this morning. Blacklist. I mean, goddamn blacklist. There is no blacklist. Right. No blacklist. Studio just doesn't want to know you. Not with this thing hanging over your head. I can't just leave. We're shooting in three weeks. Ashes to Ashes has been pulled from the production schedule. You believe it? I'm sorry, Peter. So, what does this mean? I have to testify? Assuming they let you. They're gonna call me a communist. The least they could do is let me defend myself. Studio will lobby on your behalf. That's all I can promise you at this point. No guarantees. You really up for testifying? What choice do I have? 
This committee feeds on names, kid. You go up there, you're gonna have to give them some. I'm a writer. I'll make up names if I have to. Leo, we're talking about my career, my life. Christ, I'll give them anything they want. with me to the land of the free and the home of the brave hey Pete think maybe you've had enough tell me something Jerry you tight with J. Edgar Hoover I wouldn't know J. Edgar Hoover if he walked in here wearing a dress mm. too bad he says I'm a communist in fact, at this very moment, some gray little FBI guy in a gray little FBI suit is hunched over my screenplay, checking it line by line. Another poisonous Marxist propaganda, which surely lurks there. I hope they check for spelling while they're at it. Can always use help with that. You're babbling, pal. Ashes to ashes, my movie. Stupid dog. My grapes are rad. Shot at doing something really good. Something. Something. What's it about? Pain. Nobility. The human condition. Truth. <laughs> was my chance to get out of B-movies and onto the A-list. Go home, huh? Listen, why don't I call that gal of yours? Uh, what's her name, Sandy? Can't. She dumped me. Don't you worry about me. Hey, I'm gonna give you a little extra something. Cuz, you took a big chance talking to me. Hey. You're not gonna drive in this condition, are you? I can't take this constant nagging. I'm leaving you, Jerry. I'm leaving, and I'm taking the monkey with me. I got a what if. What if you and me just drive up the coast till the sun comes up or the gas runs down? We can change our names. Start new lives. Never come back. Sound good? Or are you just saying that? Attack of the monkey.
In God's name. What in the hell happened to you, son? I'm not exactly sure. Well, you, you think you can sit up? I could try. Easy. 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 All right. Oh, my God. Wait, wait a minute. I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't stand. Do you want to try it? All right, God. Lordy, 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 Lordy. What in the hell? The town is for peace down there. You, do you, you want to try walking? Okay. You sure? Mm -hmm. All right, take it easy. I just go slow. Go slow, damn it. Oh, easy. Easy. Here, here. Yeah. Use that. I think it's clean. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, you you seem a odd bit familiar to me. Do I know you? I don't know. Do you? <laughs> it's so quiet. Yeah, well, it's early yet. <laughs> Most folks are just waking up, but it's usually pretty quiet even then. Well, it's Ernie Cole's place. He's a druggist and also our mayor. Lost two boys in the war, Joe at Anzio and Willie at Baston. Good boys, both of them. There's so many. 
Well, all told, this town gave 62 of its young men to the war. <laughs> More than our share. 17 of them at Normandy alone. Even got a letter from President Roosevelt. Well, White House commissioned this town a war memorial. I've been in the basement of the town hall for years now. Folks around here never had the heart to put it up. Mabel, over at that diner, her husband, Max, was killed in action on Okinawa. Say, son, the woman does wonders with an egg. Are you hungry? Yes. Very. Doc Stanton pops in every morning on his way to the office. Let's have breakfast while we wait. Morning, Mabel. Oh my gosh. Doc been by it. Well, he should be along any moment. Has there been an accident? I found him down by the wash. He's lying there like a landed trout. Who is he? Well, I'm still working on that one, but boy, could use a meal. Are those, are those eggs spoken for? Harry, you mind? No, not at all. I can wait. You uh, trying to set a record? Like you could tell. Have you ever been in here before? I think I remember these eggs. It's just that you look sort of... Familiar? I said the same thing. Hello, Stan. Mabel, my beer club ready to go? Doc, I think there's someone you should say hello to. Hello, son. How'd that happen? Ah, well, perhaps you better come along with me. Let me take a closer look at you. On my tab? Of course. Food was wonderful. Thank you. My pleasure. Come again. Watch the... Uh, follow my finger. Just with your eyes. That's it. Mary, will be a doll. Give the sheriff a jingle. Tell him we could use him down here. Yes, doctor. So, doc. Hmm. Well, what do you think? I think he looks strangely familiar. I'm getting that a lot lately. And that's what Mabel and I said. Vexing, isn't it? Aside from vexing, how am I? Well, you took a pretty good knock on the head. No doubt about that. Good news is, you'll live. Go ahead and put your shirt. Better yet. Excuse me, Stan. Take one of mine. It's big, but clean. That's very kind. Thank you. Very pretty. It's my daughter, Adele. My pride and joy. Charms the fish right out of the river, she does. Sorry, I didn't mean to stare. It's just that uh, 
Well, your face really does seem familiar. Wish I could say the same thing. Cecil, listen to me. Lord love a duck. Harry, you want to give me a heart attack right here in front of the doctor's office? Listen to me. There's a young man in there. Yes, I know all about it. I'm here to investigate. Now, if there's anything interesting, it'll be in the paper. So just let me Cecil, do Cecil, listen to me. It's Luke. Uh, you, you have no recollection prior to waking up on our beach. No idea who you are or how you got here? I remember... A dog licking my face. Before that, Link. I think there's someone who might be able to shed light on this. Is it okay if I bring him in? Please. Sir, would you say your name was? Harry. Harry Trimble. And you're Luke. Uh, uh, everybody's called you Luke since you were a baby. And where exactly are we going? Where do you think, son? I'm taking you home. Now, you fellas have a good rest of the day now. And uh, Harry, if you need anything, just call me. Let's just say so for everything. What are we doing here? This is it. Him, Jesty. The Majestic. Few of the letters are missing. We live in a movie theater? No. In the apartment above it. That was high school. You ran 11 touchdowns that season. My mother. You remember? Just, I guess. She's beautiful. So much. 
much to take in. Me blathering away like a fool. Why don't I make us some coffee? close to Majestic? Well, after the war, people here just didn't feel like going to the movies much, I guess. And some moved away. Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Francisco. Do you still take cream, no sugar? Nope. <laughs> Just us, son. How long have I been asleep? Since yesterday. You slept all through the night most of this morning. Now that you're awake, I'd, uh, I'd like to reintroduce you to the staff of the Majestic. This is Irene Terwilliger, our candy lady. So glad to have you back, Luke. Well, he's even more handsome than I remembered. And this fine fellow is Emmett Smith. A head usher and, and fix it, man. You won't tell him about the watch? I need me a watch. Emmett, one step at a time. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, Luke, um, fact is, uh, we've been talking it over while you slept, and, uh, well, good news, son. Now that you're back, we decided to reopen. R reopen? How hard can it be we fix a place up Sell tickets. Harry, look around. It's a dump. Tell you so. I am looking around. And all I see is potential. Potential for what? This place is ready to fall down. All you'd have to do is walk outside and give it a good shove. You're wrong. You are, you know. Oh, I know she doesn't look like much now, but once, once this place was like a palace. Palace? That's why we call her Majestic. Any man, woman, child could buy their ticket, walk right in. Here they'd be. Here we'd be. Yes, sir. 
Yes, ma'am. Enjoy the show. And in they'd come entering a palace like in a dream, like in heaven. Maybe you had worries and problems out there, but once you came through those doors, they didn't matter anymore. And you know why? Chaplin, that's why. And Keaton and Lloyd. Garbo, Gable, and Lombard, and, and Jimmy Stewart, Jimmy Cagney, Fred and Ginger. They were gods. And they, they lived up there. That was Olympus. Would you remember if I told you how lucky we felt just to be here? To have the privilege of watching them. I mean, this television thing, why would you want to stay home and watch a little box? Because it's convenient, because you don't have to get dressed up, because you can just sit there? I mean, how could you call that entertainment alone in your living room? Where's the other people? Where's the audience? Where's the magic? I'll tell you, in a place like this, the magic is all around you. The trick is to see it. Luke, you know, I think you love the Majestic even more than I did. You've got to remember that. You've got to. I don't. Luke, I know it sounds crazy, but I promise you, we can make this place shine again. We can make it like it was. I don't know how it was. Don't you get that? None of this means anything to me. It used to mean so much. It doesn't. How can it? Mary, I don't even know who I am. No. Come with me. <laughs> Bobby Rilke. Red hair and freckles. Always charging up and down the street on his bicycle, screaming like a banshee. <laughs> Scaring the crap out of the old ladies. Brad Henderson. Virgil Toynbee. And Patrick Vitker. He, he was on the football team with you. Stevie Wardlow. His old man was a drinker, used to knock him around. You'd bring him home, we'd clean him up and make sure he had a hot meal. He'd practically live with us for a few years. He died on Saipan. The Silver Star for bravery. Teddy Parker. Jimmy Trask. And this boy over here. Right, kid. Honor student. Joined up right after Pearl Harbor. Parachuted into France on D-Day, June 6, 1944. Three days after the invasion, his platoon got pinned down by German artillery. The, the damn near wiped out. Most boys dead or wounded, torn up by the shells. But this fella here carried the injured back to safety one by one. Always going back until the last man was accounted for. He never wavered. He just kept, just kept doing what he had to do until it, until it got done. He was reported missing in action a month later near St. Lo. His body was never found. Congress awarded him the Medal of Honor for courage in saving the lives of eight men without thought to himself. His name was Albert Lucas Trimble. We called him Luke. He was my son. That's who you are. Well, I'll be. <laughs> Morning, Ernie. I heard about it, couldn't believe it. I had to come see for myself. 
There he stands. And I still can't believe it. It's really him, Ernie. <laughs> I can see that. My God, Luke. It sure is good to see you again. <laughs> Luke, this is Ernie Cole, our mayor. Mayor Cole. Oh, you don't have to go that far, son. You can just call me Ernie. <laughs> We're heading out of Mabel's for some lunch. Care to join us? Oh, I'd love it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Watch your step. Okay. Oh. Mm. Mm. oh, I missed you. Not as much as I miss you. Mm. Well, well, how'd it go? Not so bad. I think I passed. That's my girl. Mm. What about the, you know? Hiccups? Not a trace, thank goodness. Who wants an attorney who hiccups when she gets nervous? Your honor, I object. <laughs> like I always said, honey, it's all up here. Mm. Mm. It's so good to be home. Dad, what is it? Oh my God, did somebody die? Well, somewhat the opposite, actually. Look at you! Look at you! <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you back, sir. Ah, <laughs> uh, wonderful to have you back. Hey, hey Luke. Luke, remember the time you and me, we were playing with firecrackers, and one of them went off too soon and singed all the hair off my head? <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened? Well, uh, all the hair got singed off my head. <laughs> That was pretty funny. <laughs> you really don't remember? I'm sorry. Oh, oh heck, that's okay. It's good to have you back, that's all. <laughs> it's great to have you back. Isn't that right, Bob? Luke, you remember my cousin Bob, don't you? You two joined up same day. Bob, nice to meet you. Welcome back. Thank you. Carrie, would you like some more coffee? No, I'm fine. Luke, what are your plans now that you're home again? We're gonna reopen the Majestic. Oh, oh, don't say it. Is that right? We were discussing it. Well, that's the spirit, fellas. We need a little more of that, huh? Yeah. Where is Spencer Wyatt? Spencer. Hey, Luke. Hi, Spencer. Spence, is that big band of yours ready to play? Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you thinking, Ernie? Well, I'm thinking that this town has had a blessing of good fortune after a long, dry spell. I am thinking that we ought to celebrate. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so what do you say, everybody? Saturday night, out at the point, a big welcome home celebration for Luke. Huh? Yeah. You can all go about your business now. He's not going anywhere. 
It's okay, folks. Go ahead home. And thanks for the welcome. Well, you two have a lot to catch up on, I expect. Uh, I think we better go on. You handled that well. Thanks. So, where to? Town Hall? Mm -hmm. Come on. You first. Why me? Well, in case the vicious guard dogs haven't been fed. So you can be a gentleman and help me down. Oh. Basement. Nice. Well, there's a lot of room here before they put the monument down here. Hey, the gift from Roosevelt. Stan Keller told me about it. Your name's on there. So were the others. I knew all these guys. We both did. We went to school with most of them. You really don't remember? I'm sorry. We used to sneak in here all the time when we were kids. This was our, our secret place. You, me, Stevie Wardlow, Tully Wentworth. That's why you brought me here? Think of it as a stroll down memory lane. Dad said if I took you places we used to go and showed you things only we knew about that it might help you remember. So, we're here for purely medical reasons. Not entirely. I'm trying to make up my own mind about you being Luke. <laughs> Join the club. So what do you think? Jury's still out. Fair enough. Any other secret places I should know about? <laughs> no, really, it, it fueled my dream. There's no way. That can't be true. No, I'm serious. <laughs> okay. You're going to have to start making sense of this. You wanted to be a lawyer because of the Majestic. Explain that to me. Well, we used to go to the movies all the time when I was a kid. And once when I was 11, the movie playing that week was The Life of Emile Zola. Right, and Paul Muni, about the Dreyfus affair. Great picture. You remember movies, but you don't remember your life? Yeah. Weird, huh? It's unbelievable. Anyways, in the movie, when Zola stood up in court, and he accused the French government of forfeiting its honor for wrongly accusing an innocent man. Well, Zola wasn't a lawyer, of course, but the way he spoke, oh, oh. I decided right then and there that, that that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. Just from that? Just? Oh, come on, it was great. In the presence of this tribunal, 
which is the representative of human justice. Before you, gentlemen of the jury, before France, before the whole world, I swear <laughs> Dreyfus is innocent. By all that I've won, by all that I've written to spread the spirit of France, I swear that Dreyfus is innocent. May all that melt away. May my name perish if Dreyfus not be innocent. He is innocent. Pretty good stuff, huh? Not bad at all. Sun's going. Come on. Watch your eyes. Is this another secret place? Our special one. We used to come up here all the time to watch the sunset. And that's what made it special. Well, this is also where we had our first kiss. We were 14. Well, that is special. Wish I could remember that. Me too. We were in love, weren't we? Yeah. Oh, oh, nothing. Mm, I'm fine. Mm, really. You hope so? Oh, uh, just, just ignore it. It's going away. Hmm. Mm. So, were we going to be married? When you got back from overseas, we were, we were engaged just before you shipped out. Is there anything I can do to help you with that? Mm. Well, yeah. But it's uh, something that uh, only we knew about. Well, tell me. Oh no, no, no! I, I think, I think I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather die. Come first. on, your father said any little thing could jog my memory. Found me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know who was down here. Just me and the dog. What's his name? Dog. Yep. Simple. I like it. Come on in. Is 
that you? In the First World War? Yeah, 1917 thereabouts. It's okay with you that I live down here. Why wouldn't it be? Just checking. Think I'll get me a watch? Oh, right, a watch. What's that for? So I make sure the shows always start on time. That's important. See what I can do. Thank you. I uh, had me a nice watch once. The pocket watch kind, you know, with a chain. Kept good time until it broke. Never had the money to get it fixed. By then, the theater closed down. I didn't think I needed it. I put it away somewhere for safekeeping, but that was years ago. And I can't remember where. Lost me a medal for bravery once, too, back during the Great War. Lost it in the hospital, I think. I forget things sometimes since the war. Yeah. Me too. Trash. Vile, despicable trash. It's about the West Virginia coal miners' strike of 1920, the plight of the downtrodden worker and all that. Communist propaganda beginning to end. That bad. Well, there's a dog in it I like, but aside from that, it... so tell me about this Appleton. His agent reported him missing last night. Nobody's heard from him in four or five days. Four or five days? Gentlemen, we may be onto something here. What kind of an American goes on the lam after being implicated? Certainly not an innocent one. What if this Appleton is more than he seems? Not just another schmuck with an underwood, but an important communist operative. One with lots of secrets to spill. Well, the Reds would do anything to keep them out of our ha hands. We have one of two scenarios here. Number one, his communist friends killed him to shut him up. Number two, they're trying to get him out of the country even as we speak. Well, I, for one, don't intend to open a copy of Pravda and see this writer getting a hero's welcome in Red Square. What shall we tell Mr. Hoover? Tell him this has top priority. You find him, gentlemen, living or dead. Whatever it takes. I promise you, his trail will lead us to a nest of communists that will make the Rosenbergs look like Ma and Pa Kettle. Adele? Got it! Hi. Oh, I was staying? What? Nothing. Um, it, it's just seeing you there gave me a, a weird feeling. You wore that suit the last time we went out. Well, I could go change it. Oh, don't be silly. It still fits in everything. Kids ready? Shall we?
I, I think Luke and Adele should lead the first dance, don't you? You saved up and bought a clarinet. You wanted to be Benny Goodman in the worst way. And? You were Benny Goodman. In the worst way. <laughs> Ouch. So you gave the clarinet to Spencer. You see, Spencer used to drive you crazy when he was little. He'd follow you around all the time like a lost puppy. So I bribed him with the clarinet. He started practicing all the time and left me alone. Did you remember that? Just feel Something is troubling me, Harry. Now, what could trouble you on a night like this? Just look. Your daughter dancing with my son. Everything the way it should be. God's in his heaven, Ben. Still, can't help wondering, where's Luke been all this time? I mean, nine and a half years. What's it matter? He's home now. He went missing during the war, right? So it stands to reason he must have been injured overseas, lost his memory then. So what happened when he came back, not knowing who he was? Did he start a new life for himself? Career? Harry, what if Luke spent the last decade actually thinking he's somebody else? I don't care about that life. I care about his life here. But don't you see? He might have people looking for him. People who care about him. Maybe even a wife and family. God's sakes, Harry, you could be a grandfather, not even know it. I'm not trying to step on your joy. My joy, too. But what happens if his memory does come back? Which life will he remember? Which would he choose? Big future ahead of him. What do you say, everybody, huh?
You know, folks, here in Lawson, we gave a lot to our country, a lot. And we never complained, and we never faltered, and we never forgot. We never forgot. And so when one of our own came back to us, it was like a miracle. Luke, seeing you walk down the street, it was, well, it was, it was kind of like seeing one of my own boys alive again. Now, I, uh, I think I speak for all of us here when I say that not a day goes by that we don't keep our boys' memories alive. But Luke, having you back among us, that helps us keep their spirits alive, too. God bless you, son. God bless you. Now, on a lighter note, <laughs> we have had a special request from one of Lawson's brightest luminaries, Irene Terwilliger. Irene, come on up here. There you are. I've tutored music in this town for more years than I care to say. <laughs> in fact, many of you here tonight have been my students through the years. And as talented as you all were, the most talented pupil I ever taught was Luke Trimble. the piano like an angel. It would do my heart a world of good to hear you play again. Won't you come up? Yes, come on. Come on. Come. You never told me about the piano. Oh, go ahead. You said any little thing for Jack and Mary. <laughs> remember ever playing. Music is in the soul, Luke. Just put your fingers on the keys and let it all come back to you. Franz Liszt, Hungarian Rhapsody number two. Like this. Follow me.
to this. Stop that. Stop it, stop it, I say. Who taught you to play like that? I demand to know. Where on earth did you learn to play such a thing? I taught him that. When you weren't looking. <laughs> Mom? Bob Leffert, right? You work for Mabel at the diner. That's who I am. Question is, who are you? I'm not sure what you mean. I knew Luke Trimble. I didn't like him much. Not saying he's a bad guy, just rubbed me the wrong way. You know that feeling? Somebody rubs you the wrong way, you can't even explain why? You kind of rub me that way. Not that that makes you Luke. So what I want to know is what kind of game are you running? Who are you really? Just a guy trying to figure things out. This town's had enough heartbreak. Too much. Me, I think you're setting everybody up for more. I hope I'm wrong. I haven't had to kill anybody since the war. Why didn't you dance with her? Excuse me? Mabel, why didn't you dance with her? It seems to me a pretty girl asks you to dance and you say no. You came home more crippled than you thought.
This was the first movie we ever showed here. Your mother loved it so much, I bought the print. It cost us our first month's profits. <laughs> that was back in 1925, before sound. You were just a little kid then. Dad, I... Ah. What? You know, that's the first time you've called me Dad since you've been back? You know, were reportedly uninjured, but very, very frightened. And the council acknowledged that something had to be done. A bake sale was scheduled, and the motion was carried unanimously. The meeting was uh, thereafter adjourned. Thank you, Vera. The chair notes the presence this morning of Harry and Luke Trimble, and the rest of the majestic staff. C come on up, folks. What brings you here? A sudden interest in loss and politics? Uh, no, sir. We're here on business of a sort. Uh, point of order, Mr. Mayor. This comes under the heading of new business. I think we can make an exception here, Daly. Huh? Well, it has to be moved and seconded. Motion to hear the speaker out of order. Seconded. Motion on the floor. Discussion open. Discussion closed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing no opposition, the motion is carried. Go ahead, son. The Majestic needs a lot of repairs, and the truth is we can't possibly afford them all, so we'd like to ask your permission to scrounge around for any surplus materials you might have that you don't mind parting with. I could kick in a few things from the hardware store, and I'm sure Spencer would be anxious to help. Thank you, Avery. That's very kind. Ah, oh, please, the least I can do. That clarinet's the best thing ever happened to my boy. Brought Spencer out of his shell, didn't it? Uh, say it did. Yeah. Motion! Uh, to encourage the citizens of Lawson to help out the Majestic in any way they can. Seconded. Motion on the floor. Discussion open. Discussion closed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, congratulations, Luke, Harry. Where would you like to start? Your basement. Eight, oh, eight yeah. more pages. Yeah. Wow. Heck, I didn't even know all this stuff was down here. Take what you can use. Harry, Emmett, grab the other end. Emmett, grab that. Okay. You know, that ought to be outside where someone can see it. Got it. Luke, we're good on this end. Ready?
No way that that car was driven onto this beach. There's simply no access. So how'd it get here? Best guess, fell in the river and was washed out here to sea. River? You got two, three main tributaries dumping into this ocean along this coast. Up north of here. something nice to wear for the big reopening? You bet. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think Bob's doing anything that night. Pretty sure I'm busy. Oh. Too bad. Anyway, you should see the place. It's really come together. Come on, Carl. Don't tease us. Let us all join together now in silent reflection and loving memory of those not with us. Give him a second. He's a little nervous. He's nervous. Shh. 
I think he's coming. Here, you get this to him. Give it to him. No, 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 no. You both. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Wow. Damn. You think? Fits you like you never took it off. I put on a few pounds since. Adele let it out. Oh, she did a fine job. Oh. Uh, Emmett? Uh, this is really Luke's doing. It's from all of us. Oh. Oh, my. So you can make sure we always get started on time. This is... This is very fine. Very fine indeed. Ready to man your post? Enjoy the show. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Pleasure. Thank you for coming, Tom. How are you? Good. How are the children? Oh, they're fine. Good evening. please. Yes, sir. Enjoy the show. Stanton has passed the state bar examination. Wow! Does this mean you're qualified to 10 bar? Ow!
out, dear. We need to order some more raisinets. Oh, and jujubes, will you remember? Raisinets and jujubes. Check. Oh, and moon pies. Having a run on candy? People have a sweet tooth, especially at the movies. Speaking of which. <gasps> Father, did we lose them? I think so. Let's see about getting those manacles off. Where are we? In the inner chamber. We found it at last. Gosh. Who is that? That, that, my dear, is Horus, the falcon-headed god of the heavens. Oh! <laughs> Your lovely Emma, my desert dog. <laughs> you think you could just fly away from me? Hands off, Khalid. You. I thought you were dead. You thought wrong. Let her go. I find your persistence tiresome. I get that a lot. <laughs> I'll make sure you're dead. Taste my steel, you dog. Taste my steel, you dog. <gasps> Curses on you. Curses on you. Infidel. Infidel. Look, something's wrong. Huh? Harry missed the real change. What? Harry missed the real change. Harry?
He's asking for you. How is he? Oh. He's had a massive heart attack. His lungs are filled with fluid. His whole body is just shutting down. Can we get him to a hospital? Even if we could get him to a hospital, there's nothing they can do for him there that we can't do here. It's not much time. The good guy wins. Good. That's good. Good guy should always win. Don't think about the movie. You just hang on, okay? Shabby, is it? Mary. I'm not. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
And yourself? I was looking for you. You okay? Well, there may be many things, but okay is far from what Well, you want to talk about it? I know this can't be an easy day for you, and... You have no idea. Your father said I would uh, start to remember things. I knew. I knew. I knew from the start. I wanted you to be Luke. I wanted you to be alive. God, you are so much like him, you have no idea. You don't know what you... What Luke... What Luke meant to this town, suddenly being alive. You don't know what this town lost. God, I feel so stupid. I mean, I knew you weren't Luke. I let myself think that... I tried not to fall in love with you. I didn't. I don't even know your name. I'll tell you my no, name. No, no, don't. Whoever you are, I, I can't. I just, I need to be by myself, okay? Adele, please. Adele! Sheriff Coleman, you mind telling me what's going on here? Federal agents. We're here to serve a subpoena on him. Luke Trimble? Sheriff, I don't know what this man has led you to believe, but his name's definitely not Luke Trimble. By authority of the Congress of the United States of America, you are commanded to appear before the Committee on Un-American Activities in special session in Los Angeles, California and there testify on matters of communist conspiracy and subversion. Herein fail not. Am I under arrest? You will be if you're not on that train in the morning. Phyllis, I'm here to guarantee his return. That was the deal. Now, unless there's some law that's been broken. Well, 
I'd have to say that doesn't appear to be the case. Appearances are tricky. We'll just be canvassing the town a bit, asking questions, checking backgrounds, that sort of thing. I'll close up. Come on, Irene. I'll walk you home. Thank you, Ed. What'd you expect? Big turnout? These aren't your people. This isn't your town. L.A. is. Not when the committee gets through with me. Kid, look, I've been on with our lawyers all day. And our lawyers have been on with their lawyers. So? So? They hate to admit it, but maybe you're not the top commie spy they thought you were. Gee, there's a relief. Hey, don't knock it. A break's a break. Seems they're anxious to save a little face after the big stink they made, which means they might be in a mood to compromise. The studio lawyers had this drawn up. By Peter Appleton. By way of purging myself of my indiscretions, do hereby renounce my membership in the Communist Party and wish to provide the following names of fellow members that those persons may have the opportunity to do as I have done. Jesus, Leo. Boilerplate, kid. They even provided the list of names. I don't know any of these people. Doesn't matter. They've already been named, so it means nothing. All you do is show up, read the statement, salute the flag. Everybody goes home happy. And I won't be a communist anymore? That's the idea. Doesn't matter that I never was one. Don't split hairs, kid. This is all a game. But it's their game. You play by their rules, or they'll destroy you. I thought this was democracy. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, they're all just pieces of paper with signatures on them. And you know what a piece of paper with a signature is? A contract, something that can be renegotiated at any time. Just so happens the House Un-American Activities Committee is renegotiating the contract this time around. Next time it'll be somebody else, but it'll always be somebody. You want your life back? Read the statement. I'll see you at the station, kid, bright and early.
I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Why? Were you on Main Street today? When those men came into town? I hate to be the one to tell you this. But I'm not Luke. Yeah, I knew that. You did? Since the welcome home dance when you got up and played the piano. You're kidding me. Let me tell you something. Luke could play the classics like uh, nobody's business. But when it come to getting jazz, he was a lost boy. When I heard you pounding that fine roadhouse boogie, I knew you wasn't Luke, couldn't be. And you didn't say anything? Just because I knew it didn't mean everybody else had to. This town needed you to be Luke. So you were Luke. But I'm not Luke anymore. That's why I'm going back to LA. For how long? For good. But who's going to run the Majestic? You are. Me? You and Irene. I don't, I don't know about that. Harry would have wanted you to keep this place going. You're gonna need those. I didn't know you were here. I was just... saying goodbye. Adele, I'm sorry. The way things turned out, I never meant to hurt anyone. Least of all you. People get hurt sometimes. We can't always help them. It's just the way things are. So, are you really a communist? <laughs> no, I'm really not. I didn't think so. Only a dyed-in-the-wool capitalist could get the Majestic up and running. Great endorsement. Can I call you as a witness? Oh, well, if it helps. Thanks. So what are you going to tell the committee? Tell them what they want to hear. I'm sorry, I won't do it again, blah, blah, blah. You're not serious. What's wrong with it? Everything. Can we be more specific? Well, aside from the fact that this is a free country and you can be a communist if you want to be a communist, leaving that aside, if someone accuses you falsely, you have a duty as well as the right to, to stand up and suggest they drop dead specific enough. <laughs> Okay, Emil Zola, I can see you feel strongly about this. Damn right I do. Fine, but that doesn't make the game any less rigged. There's a reason they call it a witch hunt. And there's such a thing as burden of proof, innocence before guilt. Maybe in law school, but the rest of us have to live in the real world. And in the real world, I mess with these guys, I go to jail. All the more reason to fight them. What like Luke would have done. Go ahead, say it. Yes. Yes, like Luke would have done. God, here it comes. Go ahead, tell me again what a great guy Luke was, because you know what? I haven't heard that enough. He would have stood up to these people. Yeah, well, he's not here to vouch for that, is he? We have to take your word for it. And frankly, everybody's memory of Luke is a little rose-colored in this town. Besides, I'm not Luke. While he was off liberating Europe, I was running the PX at Fort Dix. 
He couldn't wait to save the world. Me, I was happy not to go overseas. Why? Because I didn't want to end up like him. I wanted to survive. You stand up for a cause, you get mowed down. Look, look. That's the real world. I want my goddamn life back, Adele. Is that so hard to understand? Wow. I really did have you two confused. Where the hell have you been? Walking. Walking? For two hours? Don't do this to me, kid. I got a nerve condition. Came back from the cemetery a bit upset, but she'll be fine. She wanted you to have this. What is it? I didn't think to ask. Dearest Adele, I have a feeling we'll be moving out very soon, so I may not get a chance to write again for some time. First, let me thank you for all your letters. I can't tell you how much they cheer me up and make me think of home. Adele, I'm not trying to frighten you, but please know that I'm going into this having accepted the fact that I may not be coming back. If that should happen, you must promise me you will not mourn my passing, but move on and live your life to the fullest in order to give mine meaning and to honor the cause we're over here fighting to achieve. When bullies rise up, the rest of us have to beat them back down, whatever the cost. That's a simple idea, I suppose, but one worth giving everything for. The only thought that saddens me, aside from failing at our task, is the thought of never seeing you again, not holding you, not seeing our children grow, not spending the passing years with you. But if I should not come back, know that I will never truly leave you. Should you be walking some years from now on a beautiful spring day and feel a warm breeze graze your cheek, that warm breeze will be me giving you a kiss. Remember finally, above all, that I love you. Luke.
admonish those here to view testimony today to keep order at all times, or this chamber will be cleared. The witness will please stand and raise his right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give before this committee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. State your full name and place of residence for the record. Peter Appleton, Hollywood, California. I'm informed you have a prepared statement. statement, I would like to ask a few clarifying questions, questions just to clear the air. Well, I'm sure we all agree the American people deserve to know the extent of the communist conspiracy that threatens our very way of life. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, we were told that the witness would be allowed to read a statement. And so he will, counsel, but he'll answer a few questions first. Mr. Appleton, you mentioned your home is Hollywood, California. But isn't it true that for the last several months you made your home in a town called Lawson? Yes, that's true. And have you ever met an Albert Lucas Trimble? No, sir. That wouldn't be possible. Luke Trimble is dead. And yet that didn't prevent you from masquerading as Luke Trimble during your time in Lawson. Yeah. Order! I wasn't masquerading. I was mistaken for Luke. There was an accident. Well, I'm sure anybody who reads the paper is by now familiar with your accident, Mr. Appleton, an accident which, oddly enough, came hard upon being named by this committee. Now, what I find hard to understand is why you were in such a hurry to leave Los Angeles in the first place. A reasonable person might view that as a flight from authority. I wasn't fleeing, sir. I simply went for a drive and had an accident that affected my memory. <laughs> and what is the state of your memory now? My memory is fine, sir. I'm relieved to hear that. Perhaps you might recall the item being placed before you. It's the attendance roster for the Bread Instead of Bullets Club of the University of California, Los Angeles, dated October 3rd, 1945. Referring to line 37 of the document, does your printed name and signature appear there? It does. Mr. Appleton, tell us about the Bread Instead of Bullets Club. Well, if the committee will note line 36 of the document. 36? Lucille Angstrom? I was courting Miss Angstrom at the time. I attended the meeting for the sole purpose of being with her. Are you asking this committee to believe that you attended a meeting of a communist organization because of a girl? Yes, sir. I'm sure even a majority council like yourself is familiar with the concept of impressing a girl. <laughs> Mr. Appleton, you will please confine your answers. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I'm having trouble reconciling your testimony here, Mr. Appleton. Now, we're told you're prepared to read a statement purging yourself of communist ties. Yet, when questioned about the meeting you attended, you claim not to have gone as a member. I didn't. Then what did you attend as? I'm a little hesitant to say. You agreed to be forthcoming. I insist you do so. Well, I went as... A horny young man. <laughs> Order in the chamber. Order! Damn, he doesn't want to spar with these boys. Mr. Appleton. They'll eat him alive. Yes, they I will. remind you, this is Good. a legally constituted committee of the United States Congress. Believe me, you do not want to incur our wrath. Mr. Chairman, what is the purpose of these questions? Mr. Appleton came here today with the intention of cooperating fully with this committee, and yet, thus far, he has been treated as a hostile witness. Point taken, counsel. Why don't we just cut to the chase and have Mr. Appleton read his statement? Mr. Chairman, if the witness is not pleading the fifth, I do have further questions. Hey, Alvin. Alvin. Let's not open this can of worms any further. I want this little turd to read his goddamn statement. Get the hell out of here. 
Uh, the committee sees no cause for further questions. Uh, Mr. Appleton may proceed with his statement. I, Peter Appleton, by way of purging myself of my indiscretions. Mr. Appleton? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I think I need some water. Now go ahead, son. Mr. Appleton, the committee's patience is wearing thin. Yes, I understand that, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it, it occurs to me that there's a bigger issue here today than whether or not I'm a communist. Bigger issue? Mr. Appleton, there is no bigger issue. Actually, not to be contrary, I think there is. Gosh, I don't quite know what to say here. The fact is, uh, I've never been a man of great conviction. I never saw the percentage in it. And quite frankly, I suppose I uh, lack the courage. See, I'm not like Luke Trimble. He had the market cornered on those things. I never met the guy, but I feel like I've gotten to know him. And the thing is, I can't help wondering what he'd say. The America represented in this room is not the America he died defending. I think he'd tell you your America is bitter and cruel and small. The chamber will come to order. I know for a fact his America was big, bigger than you can imagine, with a wide open heart. Where every person Appleton, has a voice. You are out of order. Even sir. if you don't like what they have to say. Enough, sir. You are out of order. If he were here, I wonder how you'd respond. If you could explain to him what happened to his America. Mr. Appleton, you are skating on the very thin edge of contempt. Well, that's the first thing I've heard today that I completely agree with. Mr. Shannon! Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, my client is clearly under an enormous strain as a direct result of the belligerent questioning of Mr. Clyde, and he is therefore not responsible for his comments. At this time, we wish to invoke the Fifth Amendment. No, no, we don't. Yes, Pete, we no, do. No, Kevin, we don't. So knock it off! Shut the hell up and let me get through this. The Fifth Amendment is out of the question. But there is another amendment that I'd like to invoke. I wonder if anyone here is familiar with it. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Oh, 
Mr. Robert, okay. you're out of order, Congress sir. shall make no law. Respecting. The chamber will come to order, Mr. Robert. An establishment of religion. You're out of order. Or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Or abridging the freedom of speech. Or of the you press. Of or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government for a redress of grievances. You will not presume to lecture this committee, That's the sir. First Amendment, Mr. Chairman. It's everything we're about. If only we'd live up to it. Let him, let him talk. He's just hanging himself. It's the most important part of the contract every citizen has with this country. And even though these contracts, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, even though they're just pieces of paper with signatures on them, they're the only contracts we have that are most definitely not subject to renegotiation. Not by you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Appleton! Not by you, Mr. Clyde. You will stand down, sir! Not by anyone, ever. Too many people have paid for this contract in blood. Enough, sir! You are out of order! People like Luke Trimble. And all the sons of loss in California. Damn right. And they deserve better than this. All you boys do. Get right down to it, fellas. That's all I really have to say to this committee. You are not excused, sir. The witness will resume his seat. You are not excused, sir. You will resume your seat. Yep. Listen, I'm on my way to the studio. Where can I drop you? Home. Gotta pack. Pack? If I'm going to prison, I'm gonna need at least a toothbrush and some clean underwear. Come on, Pete. What makes you think you're going to prison? You saw what happened? You just told those guys to go screw themselves. Yeah, well, that's one way to look at it. Well, what other way is there? All right, try this one. Those knuckleheads made a hero out of you without meaning to, so what are they gonna do now? Promote you to martyr? No, I don't think so. This is all about them saving face. If you are gonna be a hero, you're gonna be their hero. Do you know when you were talking to the reporters, some committee flag came up to us talking deal? What kind of a deal? You know, deal. The committee thrives on names. With a high profile witness like you, any name will do. And I didn't give them any names. What, all of a sudden, Lucille Angstrom isn't a name? I didn't give them her name. They gave me her name. It was right in front of them. They, it was, they had it. I know, but that's not the way they're choosing to see it. Why should it even matter? She's just a girl I knew in college. She's not even in show business. Sh is she? She's Lucille Angstrom Hirschfield now, and she happens to be a producer for Studio One on CBS. Oh. Oh my God. Which puts you in the clear. 
As a matter of fact, at this very moment, Committee Chairman Doyle is in front of the press thanking you for your testimony, purging yourself. Thanking me for what? Ruining this woman's life? Come on off your cross, kid. You're not ruining anyone's life. The committee already knew about her. I mean, she was named six months ago. Hell, who do you think named you? She named me. That's water under the bridge, my friend. The point is, the studio is picking up your contract. Your movie is back in production. Congratulations, Pete. You got your life back. But what about the end of the movie? It doesn't seem, I don't know, loaded enough. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the character went through enough anguish. Anguish, yeah, right. I mean, guy shows up at the rally at the end, makes an impassioned speech. How are we gonna know how noble he is unless he suffers more? How about a serious injury? I know he breaks his arm, but what if it's worse? We could break his leg. No, no, that's like a bad showbiz joke. You know, break a leg. What if he winds up in an iron lung? What? He should go to the rally in an iron lung? They should roll him up there? Hold on, hold on. I think I got a what if. What if the main character, what's his name now? Haywood. Another terrible name, change it. What if during the cave-in, No Name gets conked on the head and goes blind? That way, during the rally, his faithful dog who saved him now leads him up there to give the big speech. Oh my God, I'm choked up. You, look at me, I got tears, it's great. It's better than great, it sings. Not a dry eye in the house, not a dry eye. Let's ask the writer. What do you think, Pete? Well, that's just... Just about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Hey, I got a what if. May I help you, sir? I'd like to send a telegram, please. Yes, sir, go ahead. Dear Adele, stop. I'm coming back to Lawson to return what I borrowed. Stop. I would very much like to ask you a question. Stop. If you're not on the platform when I arrive, I will understand. Stop. I will leave your book and Luke's medal with the station master. Get back on the train and just keep going.
So what was your question? I forget. Was it in Tahiti? Were we on the Nile? Long, long ago, say an hour or so, I recall that I saw your smile. true a few kisses ago Thrill of them all. 